Hey guys, Persistent Programmer here and welcome to my channel. If you haven't been here already, I solve a lot of questions on this channel and I want to provide you the resources to succeed. So with that being said, I'm going to do two solutions for this problem and the reason is that I want you to have the foundation to build upon if you don't come up with the most optimal solution right away. So that's why I spend my time showing you both solutions. If you haven't subscribed to the channel already, please go ahead and smash that subscribe button because that helps me create these content for you guys. Awesome, so let's go into the video. Awesome, so in this problem, we need to find the peak element. And the peak element is um, an element that is greater than its neighbors. So let's look at three cases here that can happen um, when we find a peak element. So the peak element could be at the beginning of the array. So here we have a three, and this is considered a peak element because it is greater than its neighbor two, and there is nothing before it, right? So this is a case that um, is considered uh, to be a correct peak. And we need to return the index of the peak number. So in this case, we would return zero. And then in the second case, um, the peak actually lies between two numbers. And here we have a number that's below the peak number and on both sides. Um, so three is greater than uh, one and greater than two. So the peak could also uh, happen in the middle of the array and the peak could also happen at the end of the array. So here we can see that um, this number three is greater than its neighbor two and there's no other number after it. So therefore this is the peak number because it's greater than its neighbor. So that's what this statement means here. And what we need to do is we need to identify um, what the peak is and return its index. And um, the question is actually accepting multiple peaks in this case. So if you look at this example, um, the peak can be at index one. So two is considered a peak because it has a one before it and a one after it, or it could be, uh, the peak could be five because, um, sorry, index at index five. So it could be six. So six again has a number that's less before it and a number that's less after it. So I hope that helps you understand the question and I'm going to solve it um, first in linear time. So let's go ahead and look at the solution. Um, so what I wanna do is I want to grab um, and iterate over all the elements except the last element. And why I'm doing this is because I want to, at each point, I'm going to go to the current element and check if it is greater than the next. So let's take this example here. So if I'm at three and um, I'm checking if the next element is smaller than this, so if the current element is greater than the next number, um, that means I have found a peak. So that's the um, formula we need to keep in mind. And if you look at the edge cases, this also applies. So if I'm at, in the beginning of the list and I find um, three here, current element, which is greater than the next element, it's also considered a peak. So we would return the index and same case at the end here. So if we are at, um, if we are at this spot, like we haven't found a peak, right? So we haven't found a current element that is greater than the next element. So what would happen is the list, the iteration would end here. And we know that the peak must be the last element because so far in the array, we haven't found um, a element, a single element that is greater than the next. So like one is not greater than two, right? So that's the basic idea behind the linear scan approach. So, okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is define um, the length we want to iterate over. So we only want to iterate um, up to one less than the last um, item in the array. And that's because we um, are going to reach over and check if that next item is um, less than the current item, which makes the current item a peak. So using that idea, I will say, um, let n equals nums dot length. So this will give me the length of the entire array and minus one. And then what I'm going to do is write my for loop. So I will say for let um, I equals zero, I is less than n, um, and this will bring me to one less than the last element because I'm using the less than sign here. So that's why we're doing this. And I plus plus, okay, so keep on going. And what I'm going to do then is say if nums at the index i is, so if the current um, element is greater than the next element, so we're going to reach over and check with the next element. So we will say nums i uh, nums i plus one. So that's the way we reach over from our current position. So if we're here, we're going to reach over and check, hey, is this uh, is my current element greater than my next element? Okay. So when we do that and it is true, 
then we're going to return the index, return i. Okay, else what we're gonna do is, let's say we haven't found um, our peak element, because if you look at this list, um, okay, one is um, not greater than two, so it doesn't go here, two is not greater than three, so it doesn't go here. So what we're left with is the last element, and we can just return that index, because we know that the peak has to be um, at the last index if no other element meets this condition. So we'll go ahead and return um, n. Okay, so n has the index of our um, last element because we are going from zero. So our indexing starts at zero and um, nums lambda minus one will give us the index of the last element. So that's what we're doing here. So that's why it's saying return n. Okay, so let's go ahead and give this a run. Okay, it's working and submit. Awesome, it works. Awesome, so now we're gonna look at how binary search can be used to optimize this problem. And to get our time complexity to log n from O of n, which is what our linear scan used in the previous solution. So what I've done here is I've taken the same examples um, at first, just to keep things really simple. And we are going to do a modified version of binary search. So if you haven't done binary search before, I recommend doing um, a just normal binary search before trying this problem because it will make sense um, after you do just the regular way, then you can see how you can use it to solve this problem. You are welcome to keep watching if you want, just to see how it can be used and maybe get some ideas about how this search works. Okay, in this problem, what we're gonna do is we're gonna apply this same logic, but we will use it um, to look at our mid and our mid plus one. So what does this mean? So our mid here is two. If we take this as our left index and this as our right index, our mid is going to be this uh, element at two. And what we need to do is we're just gonna compare mid and mid plus one. So we're comparing two if two is greater than one or not. And if it is, what we can do is we can narrow down our search space to only this part of the list. And did you see how we're using divide and conquer to solve this problem? Because we know that if this condition is true, then the solution must be on this side of our list. The answer cannot be on the other side because we know that, okay, we have a number here which is greater than the next number. So this is a condition that allows us to find the peak. So what we do in this case is we just move the right pointer over here, right? And in the next iteration, the mid will be three. So it will take the index of zero and one and the mid will be found to be three. And we do the same thing here and we check if three is greater than two and it is. And um, what we do in this case is we, um, we again move the right pointer over, right? So the right pointer is now going to be sitting exactly where the left pointer is. They're both at the same position. And this will get us our answer. And the answer that should be returned from this list is going to be zero because three is in zero position. So that's how we can use binary search to solve this problem. Awesome, let's look at another example. So here we will have our right pointer and left pointer starting at um, index zero for the left pointer and right pointer will be starting at two and our mid is going to be at this position, three. So again, we're gonna compare, is three greater than two? Well, no, it's not. So what we do is we know that our search space is going to be only at this part of our list. Um, and why do we know that? And we know that because our next element is less um, than our current element, which is the case here. So two is less than three. So there is a possibility that this could be our peak, which is why we narrowed down our search space. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do in the next iteration, the mid will come out to be one, right? Um, and when the mid is one, we compare one is one greater than three. And the answer is no. So at this point, what we need to do is we need to move our left index over one. Right, so mid is currently zero, so we're gonna move left over one at this position, at three. And we're moving that because we know that, okay, what we're trying to find ideally is a number that has one element that is lower than it and one element that is higher than it, right? So that's that's what will create a peak. So if we had a graph, um, we want a lower element and then a higher element and then a lower element again, right? So this is what a peak is. So that's what we're trying to look here. And that's why the binary search can be used to solve this problem. Okay, let's do another example before we start writing the code. So this is the second example from the question, and here we have our right as um, 
the last spot in our list and then uh, left as our first index. And we know that the mid is going to be here at um, index two, right? So this is going to be our mid. And we can see that um, our mid is greater than its next element, which is one here. So this is greater. So what we need to do is we know that the search space is going to be here, right? Okay, so we move our right index over. So now right is pointing to here, it's no longer here. And what we need to do now is check again. So we find the mid again, and the mid will be here at this position. And when we find this mid, right, so mid is here now, right is here, right is here, and left is here. So this is the new mid now. And we do the same thing. We check if this is greater than our next element. And it's not. So after doing this, mid is currently 1, right? So this is what our mid was. And we added 1 to that mid. So 1 plus 1 is 2. So now the left is at this position, right? And this is, again, the peak number. This is exactly what we need to find with 1 um, number that's lower on the previous and one number that's also lower on the other side um, unless there are the exceptions where it's either at the end or at the beginning like similar to these cases here okay so I hope this helped to understand why binary search is used to solve this problem and I think when we write the code it's going to be more clear um, and implement and when we implement the solution you can see um, how we use these uh, mid and mid plus one to check what is um, our next number and then based on that result we're able to shift our pointers over and narrow down our search space awesome so i'm back in the code and what i'm going to do first is define my uh, left and right pointers so let left equals zero so we're going to start at the first index here and let right equals um, nums dot length minus one right so we want to go all the way to the end so right will start here and left will start here. Then what we want to check is, um, so we want the while loop to stop when left is, or we want the while loop to run while left is less than right, okay? So that is our um, while loop condition. And, and then the next thing we need to do is find our mid. So let mid equals, um, and we're going to use the floor function here. So math.floor, we're going to take um, the left plus right, and we will divide that by two. So this is again how you would generally find um, the middle index. Um, so if we have, if we're taking this example here, our mid index would be right here, so at uh, position one, uh, where our number two exists. Okay, so that's basically what this uh, mid is doing here. And then what we want to do is we want to check if that mid um, number, the number that exists at the mid, if that is greater than the next number, okay? So this is very similar to the linear scan approach, but we're using binary search to actually cut the uh, time complexity of the problem in half. So that's why the time complexity is uh, log n for this case, right? So what we want to say here is um, if nums at the index of mid is greater than nums at the index of mid plus one. So if that is the case, then what we need to do, like let's take this example here. So if this is the case, if we're at two and two is larger than one, we know that we can reduce our search space only to this side of the array. We no longer need to search over here, right? So what we'll do is we will say, okay, mid equals uh, sorry, we want to move the right pointer over, so we'll say right equals mid, right? So that's how we have narrowed our search space. And else, so let's take a case like this, where the mid element is going to be less than the next element. So in this case, we want to move our left index over, right? So we're going to move it one over to mid plus one. Okay, so we're going to say, and the reason we're doing that is because we know that this number is not... Um, the peak element because it has a number after it that's greater than that number. So it can't be the peak element. Um, so that's why what we're going to do is we'll say left equals mid plus one. Okay, awesome. And once we're done this, 
So for this case, for example, um, left will be equal to mid plus one and um, right will remain where it is and it will no longer go into this while loop anymore, right? So because the left and the right are currently now sitting at the same index. So what we can do is we'll go ahead and um, return our left index here. So this is the one we're modifying and um, we can return the left and that should give us our answer. So let's go ahead and run code. Okay, awesome, accept it and submit. Yay, awesome, that works.